The process of moving from A to B is undergoing a revolution. New and strange technologies are appearing. Trains, automobiles, bicycles, all are morphing into the all-encompassing concept of mobile autonomy. And the UK is pushing to play its part in the upheaval. In the bright sunshine, it might look a little bit like California, home of the Google car, but this is Milton Keynes, and the government hopes that this 1960s new town will become a proving ground for the transport technologies of tomorrow. Specifically, Milton Keynes wants to let organisations come and test driverless cars and public transport pods on its streets. The city will soon host one of three government-funded trials backed by the likes of Ford and Jaguar Land Rover. The trial will put partially autonomous cars on the road and test futuristic pods in pedestrianised areas. It has the potential to provide um, very smart, joined-up mobility in terms of moving small amounts of freight, parcels, luggage. Um, it, it's not beyond comprehension that a pod could go and pick your shopping up from a supermarket before it picks you up to work and then takes you somewhere. So there's, there's lots of, going to be lots of new and emerging business models that could potentially uh, be enabled by this type of technology. Milton Keynes, south of the Midlands car-making heartland and east of Motorsport Valley, wants to build a new automotive industry for the UK. The city's transport systems catapult used the recent Imagine Festival to showcase some of its credentials. This multi-directional treadmill uses virtual reality to simulate the feeling of encountering a driverless pod on the street. The festival also brought together companies, large and small, from sectors outside the transport industry to see how they could help foster autonomous technologies. That means startups making apps to help plan journeys and tech companies working on deep learning, which helps computers to think for themselves. A lot of, a lot of the, the intelligence there is being developed in other spaces, so there's a concept of deep learning where you give computers lots and lots of valuable information and it, it, those computers can then work out what, what the meaning of all of that information those deep learning concepts are exactly what will be needed in some of these self-driving cars. So the automotive industry is not only developing new technology, it's spotting where technology already exists in other markets and bringing it into the automotive space. The UK also hopes to build on the work being done at universities, such as Warwick, where JLR has a research facility, and Oxford, which is developing the control system for the pods. It also wants to harness the skilled workforce that car makers find so attractive. I think one of the things we do have, um, which will attract a lot of people, is the, the workforce we have here and the knowledge and understanding of data and information processing and analytics. So there's a, there's a really skilled workforce, really good university base. So that's a good starting point for people to come here because that, that, uh, they, they can get hold of the people they'll need to run their trials and to, to, to develop their new technology. Um, I think what we do need to do, we need to address the regulatory issues and we're doing that through some of these big programmes now. We're going to get the vehicles on the road and we've got to do it quickly. The UK is conducting a review of its highway code to lay the groundwork for trials of driverless cars and pods. But the government has said there are no serious legal impediments to running such trials in the UK. The people behind the Milton Keynes trial say this makes the UK uniquely attractive and several large global car makers have expressed the desire to come and run their own project in the UK. The first trials will get underway later this summer and bring some of these future transport visions to reality. Andy Sharman, Milton Keynes, Financial Times.